for coming. This is like more people than we ever had at Baltimore Chops, which um, probably none of you were there because it was tucked away downtown by the ballpark. But thanks for coming. This is uh, a little bit of what we're going to do here. We're going to have events all the time here. Uh, we're going to get the books on the shelves. Uh, we have nighttime events all the time. Tomorrow night we have somebody's graduation party. She's graduating from pharmacy school with two great bands and four DJs. They're, uh, they spin at Paradox. They are really great. Um, so if you're not doing anything, she said invite everybody. So you all are invited if you want to dance. There will be no chairs tomorrow night probably. Um, we have a lot of great books, art books. Everything's pretty super cheap. So let me know what, what you want. Go shopping. We've got all the poetry books behind all the beer. Back over there, we have a big section. We'll have, we'll have more now that we have all these cool journals here. So thank you guys for coming. And um, enjoy the night. Thank you for coming again. I'm the editor of Smartish Pace, one of the two magazines that's putting on tonight's event. And uh, our issue is the one that looks like this, and the Barrel House one you've probably seen up front as well. Um, this kind of started from... We better... What's that? Oh, he's there. Oh, you holding one up for, yeah. Um, we've been around for 10 years now, and Barrel House sort of does a similar thing to us in D.C., we're out of Baltimore. And we kept running into each other, like, all across the country at these um, conferences. And I think it started clicking um, a couple of years ago. We said, you know, we should do this locally since we're both sort of on the same team here. So we're going to do like these home and homes, and this is the Baltimore show. And then um, we'll do something in D.C. later this year. Um, you're going to hear from first three, I'm sorry, five poets who are in the new issue of Smartish Pace. Um, and then uh, a band is going to play I Am Unanimous, after which we'll have more reading and another band, Pre, and more reading, and then the final act, Scout. And after that, if anyone's left um, finishing the beer with me, we'll listen to a DJ. Um, let me go ahead and, well, I should thank some people. Uh, well, thank everybody. Thank all the Smart Space people, thank all the barrels. Thanks, Gene, for, he's going to put this on cable access. Can you edit this? Edit all of this part out? <laughs> <laughs> what station is it going to be on? Channel 45. Channel 45? 75. I don't think we get that. Is that like this TV? Have you seen this TV? You've seen it. Alright, anyway, so it's going to be on there. But we'll send out an email. Like, sign up on the mailing list and we'll send you an email when it's going to be on. I think we'll, um, like shortly after it airs on the, on the TV, to the 12 people that watch it, we're going to put it on our website. So, anyway, sign up on our mailing list and I'll send you an email and say, hey, come watch the cable show of the show that you went to without the free beer. Um, and thanks to Andy of Cyclops. Yeah, this is really cool. Like, I, I'm really excited about not only tonight, like this sort of christening event here, is, like, things are just kind of coming together, but excited about the future of uh, events at Cyclops. Aside from our own, there's going to be a lot of cool stuff here. Um, the first poet reading tonight comes from Morgantown, West Virginia. I feel like I'm eating this thing. He comes from Morgantown, West Virginia, 209 miles to come here and read for 12 minutes. That's dedication to poetry. Uh, Matt Anz Anzarello uh, is an MFA candidate, or was an MFA candidate, until he recently graduated at West Virginia University. And in his bio here in Smartish Pace, it lists some other shitty magazines that he's appeared I'm kidding. But I'm not going to plug these other magazines. Well, actually, uh, Bat City is pretty cool. He's in Bat City and Smartish Pace. Um, and he'll be in many other cool magazines. He was a finalist for the Erskine J Poetry Prize this year. And um, maybe he'll read that poem. It's, it's, pretty, it's very clever. And with that, I give you Matt. Thank, thanks again for everybody uh, coming out, and thanks to Smartish Pace and Barrel House. Um, this is really cool. So, uh, this first poem is uh, for one of my friends back home in Indiana. His name is Josh, and uh, it's called Yes, Josher, Things Are Good. Of course, I'm not so gutso about love 
And yes, the sea is a wonderful contraption. All those boats automatically floating to their destinations. I mean, can you imagine if my days at the slaughterhouse were over and no more nights at the bar? I guess I could do without some scuzzy dude always giving me the hairy eyeball. I could stay home and settle for watching old episodes of Deal or No Deal. Not that I've ever asked the big questions. So why start now? Just lie back and think of America. I'm nothing more than a background torn from its stage, a pale field where my brother carries our dead dog under a sky of good-looking clouds just staying put. Even on this patio next to the fake lake, I can't help but imagine my imaginary herd. Hares and deer and sheep and bees. Always bees. I'm feeling comfortable in this new role in which I seek to immediately invent the experiences I've already had. I'm going back inside to bury my hand in a pile of candy hearts in their heart-shaped bowl. Uh, this next poem is a prose poem called Choose Your Baby. There's a baby with a tattoo of a doorknob on its belly. There's a baby with a tattoo of a trial bite on its foot. There's a baby with a tattoo of a wristwatch on its wrist. There's a baby with a tattoo of the baby with a tattoo of a doorknob on its belly on its back. There's a baby tattooed from head to toe with the first four chapters of Moby Dick. There's a baby that's not even a baby. It just looks like a baby. A baby who's programmed to stumble around your neighborhood, affixing UPC codes onto all the trees and dogs and cats and other living things, while humming the great gig in the sky. Every midnight, he'll play Ding Dong Ditch. Eventually, a sleepless neighbor with a baby of his own will shoot your baby in the face. This will be much sadder than you could have ever imagined. Your wife will acquire a series of exotic pets to try to fill the void. Your son will lose interest in his action figures and internet porn. Things will never be the same. Just sit in your bathtub and try to fall asleep. And this is the poem that's in the new issue of Smartish Pace. Um, so you can check it out there. But uh, it's called Love is a Series of Continuity Errors. Your scarf, your scarf disappeared and reappeared while I talked of the future like it already hadn't happened. You reached for a fork that was a knife. Somehow the clock stayed in place and we got to repeat our view from the spinning restaurant atop the hotel. Then my haircut changed and we were touching for the first time in your room. In the window over your shoulder, a different city. This is a kind of an instructional poem, so if there's anybody that's having uh, troubles with a ghost, maybe this can help. Um, and it's called, You Know How You Beat the Ghost. You stop paying attention to it. You threaten to play your homemade theremin. You guesstimate the time it takes to perform open heart surgery. Then you divide by two. You fall asleep with all your clothes on. You wrangle the Woody Allen-shaped cloud into your bedroom. You do the impossible and stay sober on your birthday. Then you wait for your fake beard to grow in. Then you pretend to shave. And the last poem I'll read is a uh, persona poem. Um, and it's called Scuzzoid Kid in a Tree. Once I believed I could karate chop the sky out of the sky, but I settled for complicating the clouds with an insistence on shape-shaped fangs. Earlier today, I yelled, you smoke weed at some dude walking along the high street bridge while leaning out the passenger side of Daryl's truck wind all tangled in my Civil War sideburns. Then I was at the nearest strip mall thinking of getting a self-destructive haircut, but I resisted. I decided to eat some acid and climb this tree. 
The birds left immediately. Now I've got their view. And things aren't so simple. You know when that masked guy on when that masked guy gives away the magician's secrets on TV? Well, I don't want to know, but I can't help but watch. Damn it, I'm into being bamboozled, which seems to be happening less and less now. This world is too full. I told my dad that. I've got ten fingers and ten toes, but I guess the thumbs are most important. At some point, things got serious. Some static cleared. My girlfriend is going to be so cool about my broken arm. She'll buy colored markers and all the beer. Daryl and the guys will be freaked when they have to drive me to the emergency room. But it's all worth it. I want to see what happens when I hit the ground. The grass is right there. Thanks.